Marriage may be for better or worse till death do us part, but it seems that fewer and fewer of us now believe those traditional words to be true. Earlier this week, a High Court judge slammed short-lived celebrity unions and launched the Marriage Foundation, a campaign set up to promote staying together. But is marriage so important that it needs to be restored back in society? Joining us to discuss are Harry Benson, director of the Marriage Foundation, and Denise Robertson, who believes the campaign will stigmatise divorcing families. Welcome to both of you. Um, so so this, uh, this happened this week. This was uh, the High Court judge, Sir Paul Coleridge, uh, that said this. And Denise, this has left you pretty furious, actually. Yes, it's it's the manner in which they're doing it. I'm a fervent supporter of marriage. I think the way in which they're doing it is damaging and is going to make unhappy people unhappier. And that does not make for a good outcome. So when you mm. say you're unhappy with the way they're doing it, what yeah. is the way that they are doing it? Well, I'm... <laughs> their attitude seems to be that if the, the people in a relationship pull their socks up, they can make it work. Now, in fact, as I know from thousands of letters, usually in a divorce, one person doesn't want it. They want to stay within the relationship, and they're left. And I'm thinking in particular of two women at the moment who are sitting in what was the family home. There's a for sale board in the garden, because it's got to be sold and the equity divided. They're wondering about their and their children's future. And one of your statements is, children from broken families are, on every measure of success, less likely to achieve their proper potential. And as their life chances ebb away, the well-being of our whole nation suffers. What do you think it's going to do to those women who are losing everything to be told their children's life chances are ebbing away? Denise, you've got completely the wrong idea about us. Um, well, I'm just going from your statements. I can only know what you tell me. We have a massive problem with family breakdown in this country. Um, we've seen family breakdown rise up to two million lone parent families today, uh, and it costs something of the order of £44 billion a year to the taxpayer alone, let alone all the heartbreak and, and all the other damage to um, poor old lone parent families. And I am a fan of lone parents um, and I obviously have many friends and know all sorts of people who in that situation. Um, so this is not about stigmatising lone parent families or anybody else. But what it is about is um, standing up for marriage because the big reason why we have such a problem with family breakdown is, is two, two reasons really. One is we've had a big increase in divorce in the 60s and 70s and we've all seen that. Mm. Um, and divorce hasn't really got much worse since then. In fact, if anything, it's actually there are fewer divorces today than there were in the last 20, 30 years. But the big thing that's changed has been the, the trend away from marriage. Couples starting off together without getting married and that's the thing that we're really interested in and fo in focusing attention on. We've lost confidence in us as a society uh, in it, that marriage is the best way forward. Um, it's the best indicator of commitment um, and it's the best way for people to start and continue a relationship. And that's what this is about, not about stigmatising anybody. But do you agree? Those were your words. Those are the, those are the words of, of, of your organisation. They're, they're words on our website, yeah. yeah. So do you agree that those words could lead to... Uh, women being stigmatised. They could. If you want to misinterpret it, you can misinterpret no, it. No, I yes, don't but of think course that you can misinterpret. As their life chances ebb away, that would be telling me, if I had seen my husband walk out, that mm. my children's life chances were ebbing away. Now, there isn't a stronger, more fervent supporter of happy marriage on the planet than me. Mm. But sometimes it doesn't work out. We should be addressing the reasons why it doesn't work out. I've tried in the last 24 hours to find out the true cost of, of counselling when a couple are having troubles. What we're talking about here is marriages and relationships that break down. And maybe that's where your expertise is, I don't know. Um, my expertise is in what works in relationships. I run courses for couples. I teach couples how to stay together. There's fantastic for free. research. Do you, um, do you I charge? do it for free in Bristol. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We run a program called Let's Stick Together. For so this is a, pretend, a preventative measure, totally other than preventive. Sort of scooping it's, up. It's backed afterwards. by government. It's backed by the Department well, Denise, of Education. You must, you must think that that's a good thing. That's surely. a very good thing. Yeah. The unfortunate thing I think is that the couples who want to stay together and probably would anyway will go along to that. Not course. necessarily. No, 
Harry, that's your absolute, situation... Uh, that, that's just not true. Um, your situation, I mean, if you want to speak so from, from experience, I mean, your, back, your marriage itself nearly broke down, and, and this is what sort of kick-started yeah. you into this, Yeah, my, my lovely Kate and I um, got into a frightful old mess when we, we did the classic thing of drifting apart. Yeah. Um, and we got right, right to the edge of the ledge, um, and we worked out... Eventually, we had some very supportive friends around us who helped us put the thing back together again, and it's unrecognisably better. So I know all about this, people who talk about loveless marriages, because we'd fallen out of love and drifted apart with kids, which was the classic thing. And, um, and we had to go through the pain of putting it back together. So what I'm about is helping all those Harry and Kates out there who needn't get into the mess that we got See, into. See, Denise, I think that, um, that sort of drifting apart is incredibly common, yep. actually, within a marriage. Yep. And it's not... And I think it's a, it's a very different thing between having those marriages which are abusive or where people are genuinely genuinely unhappy, which of course is going to have that knock-on effect to the children. But couples that just drift apart and then let it go, like I think that, that, that they're the marriages mm. that maybe people are talking about well, where you need I to want, make yeah, it work. I want to know what practical steps you are taking for the many people out there who mm. will be thinking, that's me, that's us, we've drifted apart. What do they do? What are you going to offer mm. them other than telling them if you do drift apart, your children are doomed? Denise, I think you need to be a little bit less cross with me. I'm really nice with me. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing my pink shirt, I'm displaying my feminine side. <laughs> It won't work. Um, and I, it that won't stuff work. doesn't work on her, let me tell you right <laughs> okay. now. Well, let me tell you, practical solutions. Uh, practical things. There are two things. One is that you can learn how to have a great relationship. There are fabulous courses out there. There are fabulous marriage courses. There are fabulous relationship courses. We teach a fantastic thing called Let's Stick Together. Um, you can find it if you look it up on Google. Um, there are, but there's also this other issue, which is that couples who form relationships well by making decisions to be a couple with a long-term future. So making decisions about our future before we complicate things by moving in together. That's really been the big trend. The trend towards cohabitation, living together, having babies, without actually ever clarifying... See, I uh, think that that's unfair. Because, OK, well, look, think about it also, this way. Uh, in society now, I mm. think that a lot of that comes down to financial reasons more than emotional reasons, and I think that's sort of being very sort of uh, short-sighted. No, it's not. And let me, let me tell you why. I talk to 20-year-olds, I've got a 20 year old daughter, I've, I've, I've plenty of people in their 20s. Um, how many people do you know um, and how many people do I know who are stuck in relationships that they can't get out of because they've moved in very quickly into a relationship without ever clarifying what their long-term future is? And that's the whole point about marriage, is making decisions to be a couple with a future. And you can do that if there are steps that you can take along the way. But moving in together is not necessarily require a decision, but it requires an enormous decision to extract yourself. you don't to need to share yourself. a surname to realise that commitment to one another. Yes, but how else are you going to, disp how else are you going to show your commitment to somebody? By love <clears throat> and being together yeah, and but supporting love, one another what, what as any relationship What examples have we got? We've got? We've got this massive problem of family breakdown. The reality is that we're seeing bad advice and things that don't work out there already. What about what examples works? being set by others? Because Sir Paul said celebrity magazines like Hello promoted unrealistic expectations about marriage and people needed to understand the importance of a working relationship. He also said marriage is not something that falls out of the sky ready-made onto beautiful people in white linen suits. Of course. We've had the Cinderella story and the sort of £80 million weddings or the £10,000 weddings or whatever they are. Um, and they do raise expectations and we see an awful lot of that, of course, and it's, it's not to do with particular magazines, but there's definitely a, a culture that we have these huge unrealistic expectations. But everyone knows, if, if, if anyone who's been in a marriage or relationship that's worked over time knows that you have to work at these things. And there is a real bottom line to this. I, I'm, I'm interested in what evidence says, not on what I think or on what um, my ideology might So think. we're just let me just Let me just finish one, th one thing. I want to make one point here, which is that if you look at the evidence um, that this, and this is a research piece I did based on census data, which is the biggest family study in the, in the country, the, um, if you look at all the couples who've successfully brought up their children as two parents, so they managed to remain intact, and goodness knows, I'm fully with you, Denise, it's hard enough. I've got my ch uh, children of my own, I know how hard it is to stay together. But if you stay intact, amongst all of those couples with 15-year-old children, 97% are married. 
So where are all these great success stories of unmarried couples? They're few and far between. Mm. So if you want to give yourself the best chance of success, getting married, making decisions to be a couple with a future is the way to go. Last word to you, yep. Denise. We're just being lazy. We need to work at this. I think that you're living in an unreal world. If you produce some real help for people, if I see it, I will, hands up, apologise to you. One point I would agree on. I think the media could do more to promote marriage. We see a lot of sex on television. When did you last see wonderful sex on television between two people who were married? You never see it. You only ever see romance, passion between two people who are not married to one another, mm. who are actually with somebody they shouldn't be with. We could do more to promote marriage, but you... you <laughs> I'm frightened that you're going to do more damage than good. Prove me wrong and I'll come back to this sofa and apologise. Denise, you might as well start now because I run the most successful relationship programme in the country. Single parents love it, cohabiting couples love it, married couples love it. But they're, they're obviously going to, uh, to disagree. What, what do you think? Uh, if you've been affected by anything that we've just talked about and you'd like more information on this subject, have a look at our website, itv.com forward slash this morning and we'd love to hear your comments uh, in the hub. Right, still to come, showbiz legend, still